Rodney Bay Lagoon, St Lucia. It's very hard for me to remember when I was back in UK waters what I thought blue water cruising was going to be like. What sort of boat did I need? What sort of equipment did I need? Was I a good enough sailor to be able to do it? In fact, I think anyone with a little bit of experience and a good heavy boat, a well-constructed solid boat, can do this easily. It's not a problem. Visiting the little-known places like Luperon in the Dominican Republic is partly why I go sailing. The excitement of a landfall in a new and different country is a big part of my reason for blue water cruising. Having spent the hurricane season on the southeast corner of the Caribbean in Trinidad, many boats head west towards Panama. In the sailing boat Pax, Graham and Anne make last-minute checks to prepare Pax for her transit of the canal. Before all the mooring warps are secure, the giant gates of the lock start to close behind us. These locks were not designed for small boats, and everything about them is massive and heavily industrial. The passage of nearly 3,000 nautical miles from the Galapagos to the Marquesa Islands is probably the longest you can make without the option of touching land. In my 36-foot boat Bambola, it took just over three weeks and we averaged more than five and a half knots. I sighted the most southeasterly island at dawn. It's very exciting to motor in towards the first landfall after 22 days at sea. Tahiti is in sight. The coral reef surrounding the islands is impressive and somewhat daunting if the surf is up. But once inside, the perfect anchorage is one of the reasons why the island was so popular with great navigators like Cook, Bly and Bougainville. It is, of all the South Pacific destinations, the most evocative. Sydney Harbour Bridge in Port Jackson. With the showers and comforts of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia in Rushcutters Bay, off to starboard. On the far side of the globe, surrounded by tiny, often third world countries, it's as high rise and modern as any major city in the USA or Europe. Sydney in the rain and cold of winter was a bit much for Bermuda and me. I decided to head north towards the Great Barrier Reef and the sun. We made the 600-mile passage past Brisbane to where it's a lot warmer. I anchored with five other boats in the charming lagoon of the atoll called Lady Musgrave Island. That night it really started to blow. But dawn saw two of the other boats in serious trouble. Darwin has been totally rebuilt. It's a cool and pleasant tropical town with shady squares and pedestrian areas. It has a surprising cultural life. Quite a send-off for my voyage to Indonesia, with a first stop at West Timor. Almost 500 miles of warm tropical waters. And what a cultural change at the end of it. The market is extensive and sells everything from radios to fruit, vegetables to Coca-Cola. The people of Timor are charming, friendly and eager to please visitors. We must seem very strange with our pale skin and our cameras. 